army, it's really just making very potent threats. So onto the match we have here, like I said, we have Jarvis oh, yeah. Black Red Zombies on the on the right. He's playing against Lawrence Creech, who's playing Blue White Flash. Looks like uh, the Blue White Flash splashing red, so it's actually Blue White Red. Right. You no. can see a clip top retreat there. Yep. So the the red splash, Blue White Flash is currently the deck I'm playing in standard right okay. now. Okay. Um, the red splash, it gives the deck a little more game against this matchup in particular. Uh, the red, for, for the record, is for Pillar of Flame. Lawrence is only playing three, but. Um, yeah, well, what it does is it gives him, the deck has some difficulty dealing with cards like Gravecrawler or Recurring Threat sometimes. Without red, the way it deals with it is it has to land an Augur Bolas or stick a Rune Chanter Spike, which sometimes is a little too slow. So the pillar really gives it a lot more game. So right now, we've got an empty board and a Restoration Angel jumping down and immediately dealt with by Jarvis You actually didn't yeah. even see what he what he used. Was that a, uh, it was a victim, of, victim the night. of night? Yeah. <laughs> Jarvis appears to be pretty flooded here, which is going to be um, a little rough for him. Blue light, the blue light flash decks are able to really utilize as many lands as they draw. It's very hard for that deck to flood out. Yeah. Definitely one of those uh, decks, again, making use of the Sphinx's revelation. You know, each land very, very, uh, very, very worthwhile to draw. This represents another card off of Sphinx's Revelation Between later on. Between Augur of Bolas, Think Twice, Azorius Charm, Snapcaster Mage, Moorland Taunt, and Sphinx's Revelation, it has so many ways to use its extra lands that really the longer this game goes on, Lawrence will just continue to compound the advantage he has here. So he uses his uh, Moorland Haunt at the end of Jarvis's turn and is now swinging in with the Spirit. And I, does it look to you like Jarvis has no cards in hand? We can't see his left hand. But. Yeah, I'm not positive. I, I think it looks like he still has cards okay. uh, in hand. Yeah, you can see the little shuffle. He's definitely got more than one. Yeah, so what he's likely sitting on is a lot of burn spells at this point. From what he is, you know, and... There's one. Yep. Jarvis has got to be pretty unhappy with having to pillar a Moorland Haunt token. Yeah. Thought Scour end of turn from Lawrence. Targets himself. Didn't see what he milled away, but uh, draws his card. End of turn, activates the Moreland Haunt, removes an Augur of Bolas, and uh, makes another spirit, replacing that one that died to the Pillar of Flame. So. Yeah. In with the spirit. Right. Yeah, so Jarvis, it looks like uh, before we came to you, Jarvis was, uh, had a Garolf's Messenger that, was, that appears to have been syncopated. Which is why it's sitting out in exile. Yeah. Lawrence adds a Augur Bolas to the board and finds an Azorius charm. How the fountain's gonna come down untapped? Yeah. yeah. Pretty safe right now because looking at the other side of the board, uh, not a lot of damage sources. <laughs> not a lot of damage coming from Jarvis, so. Diagraph Ghoul. Comes into play for Jarvis, yeah. kind oh. of, uh, kind of late. Oh, then and there's then something. Falcon Wrath Aristocrat. Right, the biggest issue is that Lawrence Creech has a looks appears to have a six card hand going on here. Um, so what he has to, yeah, it's gonna get syncopated into exile. Um, what you, Jarvis will have to watch out for is that even he, he has to assume that Lawrence is sitting on you know uh, Azorius charms, like. The kind of guys that would be in Lawrence's hand, I know, would be Azorius Charms and Counter Spells. The Cavern is set to zombies, so they can't make the Aristocrat uncounterable. But even so, Aristocrat's pretty weak on this board because of Moorland Taunt. Every time, yeah. it, you know, if he can make the Aristocrat indestructible, sure, but it'll still trade with a creature. The Haunt tokens will trade with a creature, and Lawrence's life total is high enough that the four damage in haste isn't particularly relevant right now. There's a Geralt's Messenger, uncounterable from Jarvis. And I think that's probably the best card Jarvis can, can draw right now. I think uh, the fact that if he can make it uncounterable, he can sneak it by counter spells, and Lawrence doesn't have a ready answer for it is pretty good for the card. So, and, and then Sphinx's comes, Revelation. And that, that looks like it's for six. This is really that, you know, Lawrence. <laughs> the, this this just show, <laughs> shows off the power <laughs> of the card because it's likely that Lawrence has drawn, say, a Snapcaster Mage off this too. Yeah. So it's not like this is the only revelation that the Sphinx is going to have. Right. Lawrence with 
upwards of a dozen cards in his hand. <laughs> in with the spirit. You know, so Blue Light Bash, what's interesting about it is that, you know, a lot of people build this the next incarnation of Cobbler. Um, if you play it, it's interesting because it plays a little differently than Cobblade right now because Cobblade typically had a, would transition, or like, sorry, maybe not Cobblade, a Delver or something. It okay. would transition into this aggro deck at some point. Mm -hmm. You know, it, uh, Delver would have this moment where it says, I can't really control the board anymore, but that's okay because you're taking six a turn. Right. Um, this deck never really lets go of control. You know, when you play it, you, you usually win when you sit at your hand and you just realize... You know, he's never going to break through this. I'll just beat him up with 1-1s one and 1-3s. And yeah. You know, as you can tell right here, the game isn't over, but it, it really is close to over. There's, it's very unlikely Jarvis has any live draws on this board. Yeah, he did not want to see a Sphinx's Revelation for 6 no. on the other side of the board, and that was kind of what is likely to be the the turning point if, there, if it hadn't already uh, happened with just this flood of lands from Jarvis. Yeah, and so J Jarvis did keep a seven card hand. It looked, I, it really seems to me that he uh, flooded, that he's been flooding pretty hard. He likely does have a large amount of burn, but it's still going to be, and, but Lawrence knows that and probably has counter spells for most of these. Yeah, Lawrence had to discard three cards at the end of his turn, so he's uh, he's got seven business spells likely in his hand. Yeah. Makes another spirit at the end of Jarvis's turn. Uh, of note, Lawrence is only playing one Rune Chanter Spike, which means his ability to close the game quickly if he decides to is pretty limited. Um, typically, you know, like as you can imagine on this board, drawing one Pike would be very, very yeah. close to being lethal. Um, but, you know, he, he's going to really have to, as you see, like, you know, just grindingly chip away at the game. That, that's how Lawrence is going to plan to win in most of these. Yeah, and that's, that's the plan right now. Uh, Jarvis adds a Knight of Infamy to the board and swings in with Garolf's Messenger. And that's going to go on top of yeah, his deck. Yeah, Azorius Charm <laughs> for the Messenger. Which isn't the worst. It'll still deal two damage, um, which I guess may... He's going to sing the Thought Scour. He's going to Thought Scour milling himself or, Jar or Jarvis. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to mill... He, he's milling Jarvis for two. Yeah. He's milling away the Messenger. That's, yeah. I had so. a good heads-up play. Put Tell right under the artist. Return to Sender. The biggest problem is that even if Jarvis draws Messengers... The, the potential to Snapcast or Sings Revelations or just draw another one means that two damage a turn just isn't actually enough. Yeah, Lawrence at 15 right now, and uh, I mean, that is that is just kind of an, like, an, a huge... Like, it's not where Jarvis wants Lawrence to be at 15 at this point in the game. It's like turn 10 or something. Uh, Augur of Bolas gets in front of Knight of Infamy and is... Targeted with a Restoration Angel. Uh, three lands, straight to the bottom. It's, yeah, it's Augur fine. misses. Yeah, he does that about one third of the time. So, you know, it's that's one of the hazards of playing the card is that it'll miss. Which is what's kind of funny is because Zombies is the premier aggro deck right now, mm -hmm. the one three, even when he misses, is like a pretty acceptable card. Sure, yeah, it, it's definitely reasonable to play, and you've seen a lot of players making use of Augur of Bolas yeah, in uh, their different decks. Yeah, we see a 2-2 two, two and a 2-1 on Jarvis' side, and it's really okay that it can't kill anything. There's a Falconrath Aristocrat, and a rewind from Lawrence. Free counterspell. And a Thundermaw Hellkite from Jarvis to follow up the Aristocrat. That will take out Spirit Tokens. Does Lauren ha uh, Lawrence have a uh, Snapcaster Rewind, Snapcaster Syncopate? Yeah, that, that, no, it's like... Charm to draw a card. Or no, think twice to draw a card. Flash it back to draw a card, and that was a Snapcaster mage. So now and Snapcaster. Snapcaster. And Jarvis can see. Yeah, that's... Right, there's so, and there's just so much reach in that deck. So many different answers, too. Just yep. to... Now, because Lawrence is playing the Pillar Flame version, he does not have unsummons in his list. So okay. A little fewer answers than normal in that situation, but I mean, with uh, 13 lands in play, that's that's exactly where the Flash player wants to be. And uh, apparently the Pillar of Flame, even just one for the early Geralt's Messenger, or, or was it syncopated? Uh, that's right, sorry. Uh, unclear. We didn't yeah, actually, we, I suppose it could have been either. Right. Lawrence was at 18, so actually, I, I think you're probably right. It was pillar. probably a Pillar. Yeah, I mean... Just having one early game to stop the, the early onslaught, in that game, 
even though we didn't see the first few turns, when we start, when, when we joined the game, the board was clear, you know, on Jarvis's side, and right. that is to me means Lawrence Lawrence dealt with the. The board was clear. And Lawrence was at 18. That's so stupid. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Lawrence obviously dealt with anything, any threats that Jarvis had early, and that's exactly what you want Pillar for. Uh, just just survive until you can really start to dig in with your uh, your control spells, your uh, your Sphinx's revelations later on, and that's, that's kind of kind right. of exactly what Lawrence wanted to have happen. Uh, hopefully, Jarvis can put up more of a fight with with. Less lands and more business spells in game two here. So looking at the, the board then, what, what Jarvis is going to try to do, he has given a little bit of, nod, of a nod to this matchup. He has a one Underworld Connections in his sideboard. So I was talking with uh, one of the Star City buyers who's actually playing the same deck today, uh, playing I would say West Wise about this. Um, and he, you know, he had said he'd taken the Underworld Connections out of his sideboard because against decks like Bant Ramp, um, mm -hmm. they don't really care if you're drawing an extra card, they're just going over the top of you. Uh, this is, I think, the matchup where that kind of card, Unreal Connections, really shines. Um, the blue-white flash deck, while it really does compound its advantage, it's always a little choked on mana. You know, when you play it, you have this feeling you'll play your 11th land and, and you'll be thinking, man, I, I wish I had more lands in play. And if Jarvis can overload the number of threats he's playing, that will probably give him exactly what he wants. You know, he may be able to even win through a late game against Lawrence Breach. So, the Unreal Connections is great out of the board for Jarvis. But outside of that, it's a pretty tough matchup. Or his main deck, he's, he's gonna pretty much run back his main deck. Right. And, and again, it's like, it's it's an aggressive deck that really just wants to do all of its, it wants to make an impact early. And by watering, mm -hmm. you know, too, making too many changes, you water down the, the aggressiveness of your deck. Right, I mean, uh, he, he, has, he has some very small changes he might make, you know. Uh, his Victim of the Night will probably be upgraded to an ultimate price. Right, but you essentially know. it's just little upgrades. It's, that's the same card, it's just, you know, there are no multicolored creatures in Lawrence's deck, yeah. why not? So, uh, before we move on to Lawrence's sideboard, I did want to note uh, something interesting from Twitter. John Dale Beatty mentions that SCG Baltimore has more players than GP Charleston by two. Same format, <laughs> two weeks and three states apart. So, yeah. uh, wow, and that's, you know, that's <laughs> it's pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, you know? I, I yeah and was... well, one of the things with the uh, increased Grand Prix schedule, which has been really interesting, is that it's really allowed for Grand Prix to have been in, uh, be in locations that otherwise don't get Grand Prix. We've seen, like, New Zealand, Charleston, mm -hmm. West Virginia, and I, I really like the opportunities that the new Grand Prix schedule has done for that. Sure. But, yeah, that, what that does mean is that when you come to a place like Baltimore with a really established community, um, yeah, you might get more to star, people at a Star City Open than you would at a Grand Prix. Yeah. And, and again, this is this area seems to have a lot of uh, a lot of players show up. So uh, you mentioned you were playing blue white flash. Are, mm -hmm. You're just playing the the blue white uh, version. I'm actually playing right now uh, instead of the red splash. Mm -hmm. I'm playing a black splash for lingering souls in the okay. current build. That'll make it stronger against control decks. Uh, it'll make it decide like my deck is decidedly worse than Lawrence's in this match. Right, mainly just because of Thunderball Hellkite. Uh, yeah, Hulk, I, I mean, think. Thunderball Hellkite can answer it. It's really it's. The Hellkite's not the problem because you can still counter it. The bigger problem is that if Jar like it's the one drop, two one drops draw. Right, no pillar of flame. No pillar of flame. Okay, I yeah, have yeah, unsummon instead. Sense. So right. it's like that'll that's where I'll have trouble. And sure. Uh, that, that actually makes sense. Okay. So what would you uh, how would you board if you're Lawrence? Alright, well Lawrence is a pretty different sideboard than I have here. Um, the biggest thing is that he has two Supreme Verdicts in the main deck. They're pretty good against Blackguard Zombies, but not actually that great because things have a tendency to jump out of the graveyard. Nonetheless, um, where I'm boarding with this deck, uh, I would add in a Supreme Verdict. I would certainly add in the Detention Sphere that he has yeah. in this deck. And I think that's that's pretty powerful. Um, Detention Sphere is one of the best cards against their deck. I don't particularly... He has a Terminus. That's really just going to play like Hollow Burial in this matchup. Sure. The cards I don't like, he has two Dissipates. I would I, I don't like either of those. And those main decks, so you board those out, right? Yeah. Um, I'm, I actually, yeah, I think I would keep... I would just choose to board those out before I boarded out the Rewinds. Okay. Because Rewind is better. Um, they're both just such late game counter spells. I'm not excited about playing either of the cards in the matchup. Against a zombie deck, you want to be less of a counter spell deck and more of a blue white, like just removal spells mm. and, and value deck. And so that, that's what I would try to change to that here. Definitely makes sense to me. Interesting to know he has three. Is it Staticaster in his side? Yeah, sideboard? that card seems to be picking up in uh, in popularity lately. Uh, we've seen it played with Nightshade Peddler a few mm -hmm. times. It's even just good as a card. 
Um, I don't particularly like it here. It's it's cute against Falcon Wrath Aristocrat, right. I suppose. We'll see if Lawrence uh, decided to bring that in, but I don't I don't see it being huge. Both players are on full sevens. Jarvis has kept a hand that is primarily full of big beaters. It has this grave crawler, but after that it's Thunderwell Hellkite, Aristocrat, the Rolf's Messenger, and on top of that he has a cavern, which he's gonna have to tactically decide where he wants to put it. Alright, so uh, Lawrence either does not have or decides not to pillar that first grave crawler, but he does have an Azorius charm. What so, I like about this is that now Jarvis can do that. And now he, now he can save the uh, cavern to be on Dragon or right. Vampire. So Jarolf's Messenger comes down for Jarvis following up uh, that attack into the Azorius Charm. No pillar for the Messenger. Jarvis has got to be pretty happy about that. Yeah, this game is looking much more in Jarvis's favor than we saw last game. He's got the early start he wants. He's resolved a Jarolf's Messenger, and now he's uh, connected with it. So he opted there not to uh, cavern up a Falconrath Aristocrat. Replays the uh, Gravecrawler and now plays Cavern. Let's see if it's, I think he's gonna it to Dragon. Yeah, what was that Cavern? Yeah, we're gonna, gonna figure out, out what it was on there. Because he didn't Cavern up Vampire there, you, you think he's going, think for, he's going for Hellcat? Hellcat. And Jarvis passes back to Lawrence. Yep, he's saving the zombie in his hand for a possible, I think for a possible Supreme Verdict, so that doesn't make too much sense. Messenger will still, you know, will take care of that problem. And... It's on Dragon. It is on Dragon. Yep. So, here is a Falcon Wrath Aristocrat. Uh, Lawrence can and will counter it with a Syncopate. Jarvis attacks with his zombies, Gravecrawler and Garol's yeah. Messenger, in for five. Jarvis is really, he's counting to 20 right now, and that's why, you know, if you're wondering why he didn't cavern up the, the aristocrat, I'm pretty sure he's, he's deciding that as long as he can get this swing in, you know, his uncounterable uh, dragon should really take care of things. And, uh, here it comes. Yep. There's and a dragon. Lethal, see if Lawrence has an answer. That's, this is 10. Nothing makes sense. Everybody in. Lawrence has a snapcaster, snap and Azorius charm. Charm's likely going to... Hit the dragon here. Yeah, none of his options are very good. Right. I think Lawrence does have a Supreme Verdict to play, but he has to remember, remember that Messenger does Messenger undies. So he's gonna block Messenger. He's he's setting up the Supreme Verdict. So he goes to one. Then if, he, if he's not gonna cast his Orange Charm, it's gonna put him down. Okay, he's, he's, yeah, he's using it to cycle. So yeah, so he is gonna go to one, and he's gonna untap and wrap the board. It's a pretty dangerous place to be. Certainly is. Oh, does he just? Oh, he no. scoops him up. So it was. He it was an Azorius charm. Did he not have a verdict? I didn't see it, but yeah, he, I, he I believe. He, I mean, I, I think clearly he didn't have a verdict. Okay. So he was playing for it. But. Yeah, because not casting it there and instead scooping seems like a bad. It seems like the wrong play. At least. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Jarvis has the start he wants and uh, the result he wants there in game two. Tying it up, going to game three here between these two. Lawrence will be on the play, and uh, I think he's hoping to see more Pillar of Flames <laughs> in yeah. this particular game. And Pillar, like I said, Pillar is the reason Pillar is picked up in Blue Light Flash is for this matchup. You know, as you can tell, just like a Pillar on that turn three messenger just really would have changed the changed the entire game. Lawrence would have been able to fl Snapcaster flash it back. Yeah. Um, then, then the couple of Zorius arms could have gone on the dragon, and we would have seen an entirely different game. Now, do you think, uh, turn turn one, I believe Jarvis played Gravecrawler. Uh, uh, he, or, he or was it turn two? Skull that was yeah, right, it was turn two, game. Gravecrawler. Lawrence, if he had the pillar, do you think he pillars the uh, the Gravecrawler? Because I don't think we had, he had the Snapcaster early. It really depends on your hand. The thing is, is that your deck is playing three Augur of Bolas and four Restoration Angels, so dealing with a Gravecrawler is not impossible. Right. Um, you really need to look... Like, especially when you're playing control, like, you have to kind of weigh it against, you know, what you think your opponent might have. Um, a lot of times, especially against a player like Jarvis, what I, what, I, what I also do is, you know, I assume that most of my opponents keep hands that are correct to keep. Sure. Or like, you know, you have to think, okay, Jarvis kept a hand that is Dragon Skull Summit, turn two, Grave Crawl. That's not a particularly good hand on the draw. Why did he keep it? Yeah. So, and you have to think, like, well... 
I'm pretty sure. So when I see that on my opponent, I would what I would probably tell myself is, I'm guessing like I'd imagine what what would make him keep a hand with a turn two grave crawler and nothing else. I'd be like, well, probably a messenger or an aristocrat, maybe like a cavern and double hell rider. Sure. Like like I'll kind of start like constructing these hands. I'm like you know, and when I look think about most of those hands, I'd be like, uh. I want. I probably in that situation say I want the pillar for a. Me it's likely that he has a messenger. I'm going to need to pillar it. Right. Um, but once again, but if Lawrence can't deal with the two one, you need to pillar it because otherwise, if if Great Crawler does six to you, that's that's far too much. <laughs> right. So there, there's this balancing act, I suppose. That's yeah. Funny. We couldn't see what was in Lawrence's hand very well. So uh, right. And and considering we we know he didn't have the supreme verdict at the end, we saw just a lot of. Uh, if we, what, he, he cycled, well, he played Azorius Charm, he played uh, the Snapcaster, and cycled Azorius Charm. He played a, a, a Syncopate Azor. Well. He and syncopated a syncopate, the, the yeah, Vampire. So. We didn't really see much from Lawrence. Yeah, and that's kind of dangerous with Flash's hand. Flash is that a lot of the hands look very keepable, but you really have to be careful when, you know, he didn't actually have much interaction in his hand. He had a lot of cards that cycled, which is pretty dangerous. The mulligan decisions in blue-white flash are, are, can be a little difficult just because so many of your cards are just sci cycling. So you're, so you're playing the uh, the Esper version. Yeah. It's, it's, Speaking of Esper, there's Shaheen Sarani in the background. We have no <laughs> confirmation that he's playing Esper. I don't though. think he is playing Esper because he was looking for a Thundermall Hellkite. So, uh, yeah. Probably some Planeswalker brew, you know. <laughs> yeah, also the fact that he's standing back there makes me realize he must not be on control because <laughs> there's 20 minutes left already. in the round. That's ridiculous. <laughs> He'd still be playing. Um, so, uh, anyway, uh, how do you feel that the mana is for, for the Esper version? Because, you know, typically Blue White Flash, one of the reasons to play just Blue White was, wow, you know, this is very consistent as far as the mana base goes. You feel like the Esper, the three color I mean, versions in general are... Well, the, the, the thing about the Esper version that I'm playing mm -hmm. is that it's only just for, it's just for lingering souls. Right. So, so it's like, I, I don't even need black. Like, sure, but yeah. what I've done right now is I have played four M10, well, what is it, a pair of catacombs and a pair of isolated chapels, and right. I said that's good. Do you like, play uh, Drown Yard? No. That's interesting, because uh, like, the version I'm playing, I was actually uh, pretty close to Shaheen's States winning deck that he played uh, win Virginia States a few uh, weeks ago, and um, and one of the main reasons I wanted to play Esper was because of Drown Yard, just just for the, that, uh, just to have access to that. And I, I think the reason I'm not playing right now is I'm not sure what matchup I'd want it in. It's not that it's not powerful enough effect mm -hmm. um, against pure control decks. I feel pretty good already, and I don't want to do it in the mirror. I don't want to mill them. That sounds awful. Right, right. Because they, they probably would appreciate it if I did it. So. It's not for lack of a good idea, it's for lack of, I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know when I do it. Sure. I, I For me, it's kind of like, um, I guess in looking at the, the Flash deck and saying, okay, it's, it's splashing for Lingering Souls, you've actually got a, a nice, a wide array of win conditions, so you don't necessarily need it. Um, right. In a more controlling build, it's nice to have it as Absolutely. the as another win condition. Absolutely. So, recall here, Lawrence on the play, but he is on a six card hand. And uh, Jarvis had a turn one grave crawler, which connects on turn two, followed up by a, or actually preceded by a knight of infamy. So uh, connects for three there, right? Yep, that'll be putting Lawrence to seventeen. Lawrence, yeah. the thought scour, uh, excellent play, auger, and unfortunately bricks on the auger. It's really not what you want to have happen there. I mean, obviously yeah, you can't control it, but it's not fun. Auger looking uh, pretty weak here because. It would be yeah. normally great against a grave crawler, but when the exalted trigger, uh, it's saving him one damage right now because the yeah. other that's which isn't isn't much. But yeah, I mean, if the other guy, if it was like a pair of grave crawlers, that'd be that'd be phenomenal. And a Garolf's messenger from Jarvis. Yeah, so. all black mana for Jarvis. Uh, Creech is still gonna be pretty hard, hard pressed to deal with this board. You can always miracle a terminus. So Lawrence gonna thought scour himself again. Trying into Moreland Hunt, it looks like there. There you go. We and see it looks like time. Snapcaster Pillar of Flame in the graveyard, not where well, he wants that he pillar. Play, if he has a Snapcaster in hand, that's great. Sure, sure. I don't think he does. No. <laughs> and no see so Jarvis now, no more lands himself. He has a pair of Thundermaw Hellkites, which uh our non-cards right now. Yeah. So 
it correct? Yeah, when he... It's not... I mean, he's actually driver's... He kind of can't swing very much. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to ultimate price the auger bolus. Yeah, clear the way for his zombie horde, and now... He can swing all three. Lawrence can a Moreland taunt here, but that's okay. Not even to me, he has Pearl White. So that, and Grave Color comes back. So yeah, so it's not even. Fine. It's a completely safe attack for Jarvis. And yeah, we're going to see that. Interestingly enough, on this board, I think Lawrence can stabilize. I think, you know, he's only a car away from stabilizing. But the bigger problem. Second Grave Crawler for Jarvis. Is that, yeah, Lawrence has dropped to a low enough life total that that might not matter. One. Ooh, and unfortunately that didn't play tapped. Lawrence drew the Supreme Verdict. But his, land, his mana base hurting him. They're all, what is I've heard them called buddy lands. Yeah, the buddy lands, the yeah. core set duels. That's what I always call them. Because yeah, well, you should even, call them the M10 duels. Right. That, I guess the Interstellar ones aren't from M10, so that's probably. Right. So a think twice from Lawrence and yeah. a scoop. And, and yeah. the, there you see actually both players' mana bases uh, failing them there, but Jarvis's deck being yeah. able to, you know, say I'm an early pressure deck anyway. I have early pressure, even if I don't get to these hell kites right away, uh, I can still hopefully make some impact. And you know, we were just talking in between games.